Okay, we're at our next stop. I'm gonna turn around and show you where we are. We're in Chevy Chase, Maryland. So we're maybe about 10 miles from uh, the last stop, the Capital One Center. Uh, again, Chevy Chase just past Bethesda and you can see HHMI. That's the Howard Hughes Medical Institute right there. Howard Hughes Medical Institute. And so the interesting thing, you can sort of, can't get in since it's Sunday, but I'll walk up to the gate. It's a nice big campus. I believe this campus was built in 1993. Uh, it's private property. There we go. It kind of goes on for a ways. There's another newer campus called the Janelia Research Lab. It's just here in this suburban neighborhood. <laughs> just off, you know, Jones Bridge Road and Platte Ridge, you know, here again. Very nondescript, sort of a big, big complex. I'll walk along so you can see it. I made up a little heart, left a little heart here as well on the retaining wall. You can see the name, Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Uh, this one I used charcoal from my fire pit because uh, actually soot is uh, carbon nano, natural carbon nano. So that's not exactly soot, but, and it's also good for cleansing, right? Cleansing charcoal. So there's, there's the little ladies and we've got charcoal you can see. And this area it must have, there's a lot of maples. So I put, like I surrounded it, the, the, the charcoal with the little maple flyers and some tulip poplar buds and some ferns from the walk yesterday. Um, and a, a f early fall leaf and Again, I don't know if you can see up close some of the wonderful wild rice, Ojibwa wild rice that was gifted to me by a friend from the Twin Cities area, um, indigenous connection there. And then I have some dandelion and lavender around. So that's, that's my little offering here. I'll just walk up so you can sort of see, get a sense of it. Um, so yeah, the location here, yeah, it's a little dead end street, suburban street and about so you can kind of see it in there big buildings you know secure i guess they're doing you know fancy medical research so got to keep all that biotechnology under control you know you've got the that campus and then there's some construction down the way i'll just look over the edge over here uh the, the interesting thing about the location is it's about a mile maybe a mile and a half uh from the walter reed Army Hospital, and also the headquarters of the National Institutes of Health. So, uh, so it's about a mile, mile and a half west are those two things. Just the previous exit off of the Beltway, 495. We've got this big complex again. It looks very nice, nice brick. You know, could be like an academic complex, campus, that sort of thing. And then the other interesting bit about the location is that it's um it's a about a mile south of the washington temple of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints and i don't know if any of you guys watching have you know drive the beltway uh, my first sort of encounter with adult life i i went to uh, for a brief time uh, for art history graduate school at college park maryland uh, wasn't the best time of my life, but I learned some things. And so I would drive the Beltway and you would see the towers peeking up over. And at that time, I didn't really have much of a familiarity with it at all. I didn't realize that later in my life, this would end up being, uh, you know, the church history and their interest in investments in technology would be so important, but it seems like it is. So it's quite interesting to me here. I'm just going to set this up that you see me. Okay, um, that the Washington Temple is just right up the road. Um, let me see, sorry about that. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, so the, the, the Washington Temple, the LDS Church, and I would presume, I mean, clearly that the, the center of influence is always in Salt Lake City, but I would assume that probably also the Washington Temple, uh, given the connections in policy and state intelligence, um, that the, the Washington people who attend the Washington Temple would be quite influential in how things are unfolding in our new normal. 
So that positioning to me is interesting again on the land. And I don't know if it, it I would encourage you, maybe you can Google in my video channel, uh, Howard Hughes, because Jason and I last fall when we were in Texas, we actually, uh, we paid a visit, we did some site visits in Houston, and one of the places that we went to was, I, the name is escaping me, but it's a beautiful historic cemetery not far from downtown, and uh, Howard Hughes is buried there. And, you know, I, I wasn't super familiar with Howard Hughes um, until I was researching the history of lasers. And I found out about uh, Hughes uh, Research Lab, which was a spinoff of uh, Hughes Aircraft in like the late 1950s. And so uh, for those who don't know anything about Howard Hughes, um, again, eccentric billionaire, you know, one of the richest people around when he died um, in 1976, interesting year. And he, he was the uh, sort of a, a really smart kid in, let's see, Oh yes, that yes, that was his dad. So the fort, his family's fortune, they were they were in oil, and his father invented a drill bit that was made <clears throat> previously unaccessible to oil deposits accessible. Only he never sold the bits; he leased them, and so you could never own one of his bits. You could only lease the technology, which is very relevant today. You know, um, Jason's always telling me with frustration the subscription software service. Right? You know, you're not only you're no longer allowed to own the software on your computer. You're you're just supposed to lease it, and then they, you you know, you're tied to their upgrades and you know paying for it forever. And so Howard Hughes's dad knew that early on, and I think he was a pretty smart kid. I can't remember if he was like had an incident of being sickly, but he, he liked um, like uh, sort of tinkering and made lots of inventions and wireless radios and that sort of thing. And then I think his parents died while he was still young. And then he ended up in Hollywood uh, making films, which I think if we, we know um, uh, that the, you know, Hollywood is largely about imprinting story, right? And creating reality from story. And so he was an early leader, not only in Hollywood, but then uh, he himself made a mark in aviation. And he founded Hughes Aircraft and that the Spruce Goose, which was sort of laughable at the time. But he was sort of an adventure aviator. And he um, developed not only the aircraft company, but then later on in the late 1950s, he had this spinoff in Malibu, California called Hughes Research Lab. And later on, he had a helicopter company. Um, so. And then um, in his later life, he became involved in real estate development. And this is in the, the, the 60s and the 70s. And uh, always messing, I can, is, there, is, the, is, there, is it going out of sync? If not, I can try to like just do it as a video. But anyway, okay, so, the, so later in his life, he got into real estate. And it's interesting because Del Webb, of sort of the, the uh, planned community housing development, he actually helped develop uh, the Hughes Research Laboratory campus. So Dell Webb is important, again, because of a lot of development that happened in Arizona and sort of for you know senior housing, planned senior communities. And if you think about what I was talking about with Capital One, and then later, when, when, if I go to Greenbelt and or um, uh, Columbia, Maryland, this idea of planned communities, right? And controlling people through planned communities and smart communities. And, you know, it's the kind of stuff that you see on sitcoms and, you know, movies and all the time, like there's tons of predictive programming around sort of the terrors of the smart housing and the smart community. Really, it's the Truman Show, right? Like that's what they're aiming for is sort of, you know, a nanotech, uh, you know, hive mind consciousness Truman Show. But so the Dell Webb Howard Hughes connection is important. And then Hughes himself developed a lot of hotels in Las Vegas. And so at some point, and I maybe shouldn't say this because I don't remember the exact reference, but it was talking about later in his life and probably maybe as he was realizing that the trajectory of all of this technology, where it was going, because probably by the 70s people understood. Oh, it's jumpy. Okay, well, you know what? Maybe I should just sign off and try to just do it as a regular video and upload it later. Maybe that's, maybe that's the best thing. So, okay, well, Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to just try to do it by video and I'll upload it probably tomorrow.